Uh, we're recording. We are starting tonight a new series. We are going to start studying the parables of Jesus Christ. And so I invite you to turn to Matthew's Gospel and chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Begin with verse 1, we read, On the same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. And great multitudes were gathered together to him, so that he got into a boat and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony, stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears... To hear, let him hear. Now, this evening we are starting not only the study of the parables, but we're going to start to study the parables of what we call the kingdom or kingdom parables. You know, when we read the scriptures, especially the gospels, obviously, we see how picturesque Christ's words are. Uh, Jesus just talked uh, and taught in a way that was uh, very familiar to the people. Uh, you know, he talked about a, a camel trying to go through the eye of a needle, and of course there's all sorts of discussion which eye of the needle it was. Was it a, the small door in the larger door of a, of a city, or was it actually a needle? It doesn't matter. It was very picturesque. Uh, he talks about uh, people uh, removing the speck out of their own eye. Uh, a little splinter or a little piece of dust when they themselves have a big plank uh, in their own eyes. Uh, he, he talked about uh, the house divided against itself. Um, and of course it was destined to fall. He talked about uh, houses and built on different foundation. One are built on a rock, the other are built on, on sand and what happens to them. Uh, he, he talked about uh, tossing uh, uh, the children's uh, bread to the dogs. Uh, he, go, he warned against the yeast of the Pharisees and so many other uh, of these uh, parables. And uh, sometimes for ourselves, I guess, we kind of have to go back and kind of do a lot of researching and think about what it was like in those days and everything. But these people, they really understood when Jesus talked to them. When he told these parables, it was just like that. And sometimes his parables, I believe, they could have just turned and looked one way or the other and they would have saw exactly what he was talking about, something very sim similar. Uh, and it's interesting, when we read the New Testament, and if we begin with Matthew's Gospel uh, and uh, Matthew chapter 1, we do not come to a parable until chapter 13. It's kind of interesting. Now, we read a lot of Christ's teaching and everything, but this is a unique thing that Jesus begins at this point. Um, but all this changes in chapter 13 because he has one parable after another. There will be seven parables that we see. And they all have one theme, the kingdom of God. Uh, that's why we call them kingdom parables or parables of the kingdom. This chapter begins 
with what we call normally the parable of the sower. I'm changing that. Not that I have any influence on anybody, but I want to call it the parable of the soil. And the reason I tell you that, if you read this parable, you will see that the emphasis is on the soil, the ground, not on the sower. Now, the sower is very important. We'll talk about all that. But it's the soil itself that really is the emphasis. Um, it's also one of the parables that is found in all four Gospels. Uh, not in the same form exactly like, like we have here, because later on in this chapter, Jesus gives us the interpretation of it. Um, in this parable, there are four distinct soils. It, just as we were reading that, I, I think you saw that. And, uh, and so, Jesus here is pitching, uh, is uh, picturing a, a picture for them, painting a picture for them, I guess I should put it that way, that they would have been very familiar with. Uh, because as they traveled along, they didn't have all the highways and, and all that stuff that we have. Uh, they had a few roads, uh, and uh, a lot of times they would have footpaths in, in between people's fields. And so that was something they saw a lot of, and they would have traveled that way. They also would have seen a farmer out sowing. Mm -hmm. Now, they sold very differently than we do. Uh, they, of course, would go out and they would uh, turn over the, the, the ground and everything, the soil. Uh, it was very, very hard work. They could only uh, do a little uh, very little area because they had a, a kind of like a wooden type of plow and they might have a, uh, a donkey or something. They might have a wife. Um, I'm serious. That's, that, that's exactly what would happen. You know, in, 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 listen, in the United States, uh, 1800s, we can go back and see that. Uh, when they came out here out west, there was, uh, you, you, we see pictures in the prairies and stuff, and here, husband's out front in the back, and here the wife is, you know, she's pulling the plow, and away they go. So it was very difficult, number one, and then they didn't have uh, any machinery to, to put the seed out. What the farmer would do is he would have a bag with a, with a strap on it, and he would put it over his shoulder, and as he walked through his field, he would take his hand and put it inside that uh, bag, and then he would cast it like this. We call it broadcasting. And that's where we get the word for broadcasting for radio and TV, that broadcasting. He would spread the seed. Well, as he was doing that, that seed would go all over the place. And so that's the picture here. So you imagine these folks as they're, as they're listening to this and they're thinking, oh boy, I've seen that so many times. And many of them had done it themselves. How many of them? Who knows? Gobs of them. Because it was pretty much an agrarian society. Most people were farmers. That's what they had to do. So this evening, I'm only going to start with looking at the ground or the soil that Jesus was talking about. The first one we come across is what we call the wayside soils, verse 4. And he, talking about the sower, he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Now two things are told us about this soil regarding the seed. The soil is a path or a road that runs through a field, as I said. Uh, and so not only would there be one through, because you have to realize they had their, their fields next to each other. And so maybe somebody has an acre or less like that, and then somebody has one over here and another one here and here. And so they would have these areas through. Well, they would also have other little paths because they obviously couldn't cover a whole acre from one end. 
So they would have to have these little paths that they would go through and they would be throwing. And so these are paths that people walk on. What happens to the soil? It gets pressed down, it gets crushed down, eventually it gets hard. And you can imagine over the years just how hard that would get. Uh, we see this a little bit. If you have a, a driveway that's gravel, you know after a while what happens to it. Uh, you don't have much loose gravel anymore. You have it all packed down. Uh, in fact, what we do is go and get more gravel, pour it on top again. I'm not sure why. Uh, and so it's packed down. It's packed down by the people. It's also packed down by animals because wild animals would come through and then domestic animals would come through and it would just pack that ground down. What couldn't it do? It could not receive the seed. It was hard. And because the soil did not receive the seed, the seed is out there and the birds would come and they would take the seed which lay on the top of the ground. And maybe you've even seen that yourself. Have you ever, I know when, I, uh, when I've uh, tried to uh, seed a, a lawn, uh, I think I've quit that by now, but uh, you know, every once in a while I get kind of, my philosophy is if it's green, leave it alone. That, that's, that's how I function. But uh, every once in a while, I, I don't know what happens to me, and I decide, oh, I need more grass. So I, I go out there and I, and I notice, I, I don't do it this way, I, I have a push one. I tried one of those that broadcasts. You see, there was a broadcast one, and you, you have a handle and a thing, and just pull like that, and But I do the push one. And you know, it goes all out there and everything, and, and then you know what I find later, about the next day? We get a lot of birds about this point. <laughs> They're out there saying, thank you, Ed. That was really nice of you to do that. So, and that's not always, you know, that kind of ground. The second kind is what we, is the stony soil, verses five and six. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth. And they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Now, I've heard some people say, and I'm not sure how they get this, but oh, it was ground that there was, rocks, uh, that there was rock underneath it or something. That's not what it says. What this is talking about, because if you look, there's not much what? Soil over it. So there's, there's rocks here and there. <clears throat> Most of you have not been to New England. Uh, if you would go into New England, you'll see a very interesting thing. Uh, and by the way, you'll see it in Ireland too, that uh, they have very stony ground. And so what they've done over the years, over the centuries actually, is they've gone along and pulled the, the stones up and they build walls alongside. In Ireland, they actually grow stones, right? I think so, because they keep on coming up, you know, they just keep on coming up. They, you know, they pull some and the next thing you know, there's another one. But this is, you know, it's got the stones out there and so the, the soil is very shallow. There's not a whole lot of soil. And so the seed falls and it falls on that kind of ground and at first, wow, it's good because the seed is there and the water is, gets there and it spreads out, you know, whatever, and comes up, and wow, it's great, it looks good. But what happens? The sun comes out, it dries everything, it doesn't have a root system that's uh, worth anything, it hasn't gone down, so it can't get anything below that, those rocky surfaces, and it's scorched, and it dies. And, uh, <coughs> So it withers away. Then we come to the third, and that's the thorny soil. We find this in verse 7. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. Now the word thorns there really is talking about any kind of weeds. 
So it could be thorns, it could be any kind of weeds. Now, we all know, I think, that weeds are amazing things. Uh, weeds grow better than anything that we have. In fact, green, weeds grow all by themselves. And, uh, and you don't have to do anything to grow a weed. It just gets out. In fact, I, I think maybe the best thing we should do with our lawns now in California is just grow weeds, you know. That's, in fact, some people are growing weeds in California. Some people are growing other kinds of weeds too, but I'm not talking about those kind of weeds. <clears throat> now, this ground is filled with vegetation, but it's weeds, lots and lots of weeds. And they don't have a little weed thing, you know, that you can go along and cut them up. You have, you'd have to go up and pull up every single one of them. The thorns are very vigorous, the weeds. And the seed goes out, but the weeds devour it. The weeds take over. The weeds take the moisture. The weeds have control of everything. And so the thorns or the weeds kill the seed, or they starve it out, and nothing grows. But then there's good soil. In verse 8 it says, but others, I always like that word but, but others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So here we have a fourth soil. And by the way, this is the only soil that's acceptable. This is the only one. All the other ones, they don't. I know some will take and say, well, maybe, you know, this one, you know, is so, no, no. Because this soil is the one, the only one that yields anything that's permanent. You know, the second soil, it did yield a plant, didn't it? Mm -hmm. But it didn't last. The next one, probably had some yielding, but it didn't last. The soil that not only receives the seed, but allows it to grow, but then to be fruitful, to produce. And Jesus called this good soil. And it's also fruitful soil. It brings forth fruit, and it brings forth a lot of fruit. Some 100, some 60, some 30. But it brings forth a good crop. And so these are the soils that we're going to be looking at. The disciples are going to say to Jesus, you're teaching us now in, in parables. We don't understand this one. And so this beginning one, Jesus will actually interpret it for them and share with them what it means. And that's what we get to do next week, Lord willing, because it'll take way too much time this week. All right? Heavenly Father, I thank you. Thank you for parables. Uh, they really bring out incredible truths. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, that we can study the parables, and we can learn the things that you were teaching, teaching to others that you also wanted to teach to us. And so help us, Lord, um, to really uh, pay attention to them, to learn how we can better understand them, and to learn the truths that we need to learn, but apply them in our lives as well. It's so important, Lord, for us to be applying thy truth in our lives. And I really thank thee, Lord, for this precious time, and I trust that this series will be 
I know to me a blessing, and I trust it will be to each one of us a blessing. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.